so amaranth 0 0.9 actually and although it works in 2.69 uh, I would say you just update to 2.7 is much better and faster anyway so the latest release 0.9 actually hasn't been long since the previous release in 0.8 it's been like a month or so um, but I've been using it every day for work so I found some little things here and there that can be tweaked and I this is my attempt at that so the first one is on the animation side um, jump x frames on shift up or down so basically you know when you hit shift up or down you go every 10 frames um, which is nice but sometimes you want to change that value you want it to be something else so in the latest amaranth in the editing tab on your user preferences you can set this value to anything you want you can set 24 if you want to go every one frame and then on shift up and down you go every uh, 24 frames so you can set it to anything you want and save the user settings so it will save it will, it will be saved on your startup.blend for uh, the next time you open blender quite handy i think uh, the next is render remember layers for rendering so this is mostly to help your uh, memory or my memory in this case um, when doing lighting and compositing you often have like a, a specific number of layers uh, that you want to be on for render. So say, um, let's open a real file from Kevin Andes. So let's say Andy set this file up for these three layers to be on when rendering or for, I don't know if there's like maybe this because it also has the background. So, okay, these four layers, but somebody else opened this blender, this blend file and forgot to open this layer and save the file. Mm, that's bad so uh, one way to prevent that is to um, save that layout so maybe um, the next time you can just set it up once and then the next time you just hit this magic button I'm going to show you um, basically you just have your layers set up and then you hit save current layers for rendering um, that's it it will get it will get saved and you have little hints here of, of how it looks uh, which layers are on for uh, should be on for for rendering so if you go ahead and change the um, the layer setup or whatever before saving you just hit here view layers for render and it will uh, set these layers again and there's also a button here in the in the 3d view so uh, to make it easier um, you can also add or, or change um, layers from here. You just click on the button and it will add or remove them from the, these layers for rendering setup. Um, yeah, you can also clear that, but uh, you will get back. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple, but it, it helps to, um, to have this. So you don't have to remember every time for files you haven't been worked on in ages so something else for helping the memory and uh, this yeah this really shows that i have a bad memory is this the next feature is on cycles such as render samples so when you're rendering if you're using branch path tracing and if if you're not using it then you should because it's awesome and it's more flexible it takes a bit more time to set up but it's nice so you basically have a number of samples per uh, shader. So basically shaders, yeah. So for like diffuse, glossy, transmissions, AO, and so on. So say for example, for the diffuse, you have a lot of diffuse in this scene, you have 16. For glossy, you have eight. For transmission, maybe you have a lot of trans uh, like translucent uh, uh, shaders with transmission. So you give it a lot and then you do the same for the rest. So you want to save this number and maybe you want to do a faster render, like, okay, half the quality because I want to see something else. Okay, you have to go through each one and lower the, the value. Um, this is not really handy, especially when you have this sweet number that you say, oh, this is awesome. This is the greatest number of samples I need, um, but I don't want to go further. So you just click on uh, 
set as render samples and it will get saved on the blend file so you now you have these little options here that you can go 50 percent 25 75 or back to 100 and you can save this blend file and forget about it the next time you open it if there is a uh, render samples thingy here loaded uh, saved on the blend file it will be uh, showing up here so yeah it's also pretty simple but I, I find it handy when you want to do like a quick render just set it to really low render and then go back to 100 um, just for testing purposes this also gets saved on the blend file yeah I mentioned that already so nodes x y z sliders for normal node yeah this is something that Lucas did and it's great because if you are uh, using, if you know the um, vector normal node, you know you have this thing here, this weird widget of a little sphere and you can just click and move around, but it's not really precise. Uh, you can move in really small values, you can hit shift and go really low, but it's not um, so precise. So for that, uh, I asked uh, Lucas and he helped me to get this thing here in the um, properties panel. When you select the normal node, uh, you have now an X, Y and Z slider so you can move each axis individually and in really, really small numbers, which is very nice. Um, you can also hit shift, of course, and move it even more precisely. Of course, this is not the same, the, the most uh, intuitive way to work, but it's, it helped me a lot. And uh, after a while you get used to how it works and uh, you know already exactly which slider to move to get it, uh, to, to get the thing to where you want it. So thanks, Lucas. The next scene debug. Okay, well, this is a bit long, so uh, I'm gonna first uh, explain the rest which is uh, faster uh, object ID for dupli groups this is so um, you know object IDs you have um, any object in the scene and you can set on the object properties you can set a um, object ID so you set any number you want and you can use this as a mask when you're rendering and you enable the object ID pass but this only works for local objects, for objects that are belong to the scene, they're local. But what if you want to apply this to say um, a linked character or environment? So you want Koro here to be uh, to have this um, one object ID, regardless of what is inside or where it's coming from the library. Um, now in Amaranth, you can set this uh, option here called the uh, um, well, it actually doesn't call it anything. You just set a number and then apply object ID to do, please. So you hit that number, uh, the, the, that button, and it will apply the, the ID number you set to all the objects inside this, this, uh, this character, this group. So now you have to save your blend file and the next time you open it, it will be uh, um, showing there, which is very nice. Um, how this works? Uh, well, it's uh, the, the internals are a bit more complicated. Yeah. It just makes a, it's a bit hacky. It just adds a, um, a file, a um, script, a text file that is registered. So it will load on when the next time you open the blend file and it will apply this uh, little script over here that it just goes for this file. It will, if, if the object ID is in zero, it will apply the object ID to all the objects inside. Uh, it's pretty simple, I, I think. Um, so you can clear it too, so it, it goes away. Uh, and the next time you say reload, the object ID will be back to normal. Dupli groups, uh, library path. This is just um, a little thingy. It's just to, to make it easier to open linked libraries. So, um, you know, when you have a linked character or object or group or whatever you have here the name and that's it for the library you have to actually have to go to the outliner and find out somewhere else so I just added this little 
label here that you can also click and it will open this uh, blend file so you can uh, check it better and it will also open it with the absolute path so you don't mess any um, any paths or any textures or whatever it's pretty small but i find it uh, handy and fast to to access those libraries display image file name on the sequencer header okay this is simpler too this is um this is super simple if you go to any um well the, the images are not loading but that's not what we're looking uh, we actually want to know, for example, for this active strip, I want to know what is the name of the blend file that we are in here. So you can go to the strip input and find out here, but sometimes this gets long and uh, it gets a bit messy and you have to go here in the sidebar and uh, find it, find this little thing here. So I just copied this here over here. So now we'll show it for the active strip it will show the um, file name and the overhead, if there's any. So, the next one, EXR render one, when C is not connected. So this is a bit more specific. It basically means that if you are, um, let's go back to the theme. So if you're working in the, in the um, movie I'm working on now on Kiribati, we are rendering uh, using EXRs and since it will be stereo, we need the, the set uh, buffer. So if you use, if you do uh, compositing, you have this set output and it's not really common that you will go here and manually set this, um, this slider to the set, the set uh, value that it should be. So, um, yeah, so to avoid that, I just added this label here that it will check if the composite Z pass is connected or not. Only if the Z buffer, of course, is it doesn't make sense to show it if, if you're not using Z buffer. So, yeah, that's pretty uh, small. So a lot of other tricks and fixes, but let's go to the scene debug. Okay. List missing images. This is mostly when you're working on bigger productions with a lot of files and with um, yeah, all kind of, of library linking and stuff that can get lost. So let's see how this file is doing here. So in the scene debug panel here, it says this file actually is from Combinant that it should be fixed and has two missing images. Um, one of them is Park Chestnut Call, and the path that it's looking for is actually uh, an absolute path, and it's slash home slash guest. And this reminds me of the Blender Institute for some reason. And the uh, Park Chestnut reminds me of uh, Big Pug Bunny. Interesting, Andy. <laughs> so um, it also shows you the, the file where it's coming because sometimes it's not local. Um, so you just click on it and again, it will open this uh, library here. So you can just go back to scene debug and here you find there are actually eight missing images, but two of them actually have no users. So maybe if I just save and reload, it will get rid of this more probably. Yeah. But there are also some images that are missing here. So to fix that, you just go to the image editor and uh, yeah, find out. This, for example, Park Chestnut Call is looking for this path. If it doesn't exist or if we are not using it, just shift click on this X button and it will get rid of that and save, of course. Um, so that's for list missing images. Uh, um, it's nice when you are missing, uh, when you know you're missing textures or like when you have the, that pink color in cycles, well, uh, this will help. Another thing, let's see, list missing node links. So these are actually, this is one button, but it shows three different warnings, um, if there is any, of course. So the first one is node groups that were linked, but are now missing data block. 
So I don't have any example right now here, but sometimes uh, if you have a group, a node group that is, for example, linked and you move the other file, the original file, so the link is lost. It will show here, it will say missing data block. So this uh, button here, uh, not this one, but this one, will actually go through the files, uh, go through the nodes, sorry, and uh, say if this was, if there's any missing data block node or not. Um, another thing it will print, it will show you uh, image nodes pointing to a non-existent image. So, okay, now we can use this actually. Uh, so you know the bark chestnut called PNG is missing. So let's use that as an example. I'm gonna add here a an Im image or let's do it here for a, for a material. So here, so we have our material and we have a texture image, for example, here. So we know the that park chest this one is missing so it should print now something so if we are looking at this this now it shows pink of course because the we know that this image texture is missing so if we now if we now click on the list missing node links it should show you yes one image node missing a link so there is one missing node one image node that is missing link if you go to the terminal, if you're on Windows, you just go to Window, uh, Toggle, Terminal, Toggle Console or something like that. And it will show you the uh, name of the material that has this, uh, this missing node here, the name of the image that is missing, the path where it should be looking, this is the one we have here, and the name of the object, in this case, the cube, uh, cube 001. So that way it's really easy to find where is that missing texture. So if this image is not connected or say we have an image, let's see here, click. Yeah, so this one exists, but uh, it's not connected. It's just floating around, but it's still loaded by Blender. So this is not good. So um, Amaranth is also complaining about that. There is one image node with no output connected. And if you have plenty, it will tell you that there are three image nodes with no output connected. So that way you, know, you avoid to have these floating images that are not doing much. Um, so yeah, that's also handy. These three options are more complete here in the um, in the terminal. Here it show, only shows you the number, but here in the terminal you'll have a much more uh, detailed listing, which is very nice. List empty material slots. So this option, it will list the materials, the, sorry, the materials that, no, the objects that have empty material slots. What is that? Here we have the plant low, 001 object that is linked because it has an L here and it's coming from this library. So let's find out here. Let's go to um, here, sin debug list. Yes, plant low. So if we look for it in the outliner, plant low 001 selected. Where is it? Here, in the second layer. And this object indeed has an empty material slot, which is not too bad, but you don't often want that. Um, it's not going to do a lot of harm to your file, but it's just, uh, it's just not nice to have it. So yeah, you can just have that or not use it and clear that at least. So this is to keep your files nice and tidy. Um, that was 0 0.9. Actually, it has a lot of really different features, but I find them useful to work on production. If you have anything in mind that you think is also handy, um, just poke me on Twitter at Pablo Vasquez underscore or Facebook or whatever. Leave a comment on this video under the like button. 
So that's pretty much it for Amaran 0.9. Um, uh, for the 1.0 release, I'm gonna do a cleanup. Maybe it won't have a lot of new features, but it will be a, um, a, a cleanup of this messy add-on. And I might put it somewhere else in the in the Blender market. Why not? Just to to get it out there. Um, I hope you like it. And uh, yeah, if you find anything weird with it, just bug me. Bye bye.